Part One of Our Little Japanese Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Our Little Japanese Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. Part One. Lotus Blossom is the dearest little girl in the world. I beg your pardon. I mean in the Eastern world for she lives far away across the pacific on one of the beautiful islands of japan lotus blossom is very pretty she has a round face with a clear yellow skin and her teeth are like little pearls her black hair is cut square across the forehead and braided behind it is never done up in curl papers or twisted over hot iron the little girl's mamma would think that very untidy lotus blossom does not smile very often yet she is always happy she does not remember crying once in her life why should she cry papa and mamma always kind and ready to play with her she is never sent to bed alone in the dark for she goes to sleep and gets up in the morning when her parents do she does not play so hard as to get tired out and cross with everybody she takes everything quietly just as the big folks do and is never in a hurry her playmates do not say unkind words to make her sad for the children of japan are taught to be polite above everything else why i have heard that once upon a time one little yellow boy so far forgot himself as to call a lady bad names his parents were terribly shocked they felt that they had been disgraced and at once sent for a policeman to go to the lady's house and ask for the child's pardon as for him well he was severely punished in a way you will hear about later on in my story besides all these things which help to make lotus blossom happy she is dressed comfortably tight stiff shoes could never be thought of for a minute she wears white stockings made of cloth a separate place in each one for the big toe in fact they resemble long mittens that is all lotus blossom wears on her feet in the house but when she goes outdoors she has pretty sandals if the walking is good these sandals have straps which are fastened on the foot between the big toe and around the ankle if the ground is muddy or covered with snow lotus blossom puts on her clogs they are queer things raised high on strips of wood of course one can't walk very fast on such clumsy affairs but the japanese dislike getting their feet wet as much as kittens do and would wear anything to prevent such a mishap but if lotus blossom stops at a house or store while she is out walking she is polite enough to take off her clogs or sandals before going inside that is one reason why every building can be kept so clean the little japanese girl's clothes are pretty as well as comfortable it is not possible for pins to break her tender flesh because they are never used about her dress in summer she wears a silk or linen garment made very much like your papa's dressing gown except that it has immense sleeves beautiful scarlet flowers are embroidered all over it and a white sash is wound around her waist and tied in a big flat bow behind she is very fond of red, so she has a bow of red crepe in her hair, and a small red bag is fastened to her belt in front. What do you suppose she carries in the bag? Paper handkerchiefs. Not linen ones like yours, which are washed when they get soiled, but rather of soft, pretty paper. As soon as each one is used, it is thrown away. Do you think that it is a very nice and cleanly custom? Indeed, there are many things about the Japanese which we might copy with profit for they are the cleanest people in the world perhaps another reason why our little cousin is so happy is because she is always clean lotus blossom carries another bag at her belt filled with amulets these are charms to keep away any evil spirits that might do her harm in the bag with the charms there is a brass plate which tells her name and where she lives so if she should get lost her mother need not worry for she will be brought safely home without loss of time but what can be the use of such big sleeves when her mamma cut them she made them long enough to nearly reach the floor 
Then they were doubled up inside and fastened in front, so that they could serve as pockets. How you would love to see Lotus Blossom and her brother tuck away their playthings in their big sleeves when the mother calls them away to do something for her. It is enough to make an American boy's heart fill with envy. He may boast of six pockets, but what of that? They could all be filled and stowed away in one of Lotus Blossom's sleeves, and room would be still left. The little girl's life is like a long playtime. In the first place, she lives in a sort of playhouse. There is nothing to get out of order. No chairs in the way, no table scarves to pull down, no inkwells to tip over. There is only one big room in the house, but there are many beautiful paper screens, so her mamma can divide the house, just as she pleases, by moving the screens about. If company should arrive suddenly, there need be no question whether there is a guest room or not. One can be made with screens in a moment. Even the front of the house is made of screens, which can be closed at night and folded away in the morning to open up the whole house to the fresh air and sunshine. There are no carpets on the floors, but instead of these, there are pretty mats made of rushes. They are exactly alike in size and are shaken every morning. There are no chairs, for Lotus Blossom's family sit on the mats or on cushions on the floor. They cannot lean against the walls either, for remember, there are no walls. And if they should lean against the screens, they would tumble over. The only tables are six inches high. They are pretty and delicate and are highly lacquered. When Lotus Blossom has nothing else to do, she likes to look at the pictures on these little stands. But where are the stoves? How do the people keep warm in the cold winter days? And where is all the cooking done? In the picture, do you see a little box with smoke rising from it? It is lined with metal, and charcoal is burned in it. All the food is prepared over these little fire boxes. If anyone is cold, he has only to get a fire box, light some charcoal, and sit down beside it. And when Lotus Blossom goes to breakfast, she has a fire box beside the lacquer table, so that water for her tea can be kept hot. Tea, you say? That little girl, nine years old, drinking tea? Yes, we have to admit that the Japanese child drinks tea at a very early age, and with no milk or sugar either. But then the cups are so tiny, they do not hold much. They are no bigger than those in a doll's china set. How quickly the little tea table is set at meal times! Each member of the family has one all to himself. There is no tablecloth, no knife, or fork, or spoon. Instead of these, one sees a pair of chopsticks, a small cup and saucer, and a plate from which he eats the steaming rice and the minced fish. But suppose that the tea or rice should be spilled on a beautiful table? Please don't imagine such a thing. Japanese children are too carefully trained by their kind mamas to be so careless. They handle the chopsticks so daintily that no grain of rice nor bit of fish falls as they lift the food to their pretty mouths. Where does our little Japanese cousin sleep in this funny house? There are no bedsteads, or mattresses, or blankets, or sheets. When bedtime comes, her papa and mamma move the screens around so as to shut themselves off from the rest of the house. Then they go to a cupboard and take down some wetted quilts and queer wooden blocks, whose tops are slightly curved. A quilt is spread on the floor, and the wooden block serves as a pillow. Some paper is laid on it, so that it may be kept clean. And now, you think, Lotus Blossom may get into her bed after she has undressed and put on a nightdress. Not so, however. She must bathe in a tub of such hot water that it would turn your body very red if you were only to hop in and out again. The whole family bathe in the same tub of water, one after the other, and it is kept hot by a tube which runs to a firebox. The little girl puts on her day dress after her bath is finished and, lying down on the quilt, she rests her head on the hard pillow. Mamma covers her with another quilt, and she is soon sound asleep. End of part one. Recording by Julie Niedermeyer.